After going over my archives to produce a thorough timeline with detailed information and events, the project has finally arrived. My retrospective series on this group and their holy crusade to drag me and others down with them. Their successful bamboozling of the community they reside in. This is the first episode of the Fruitcake Cox. Before we get into the fun, let's do a rundown for some context. I'm talking about the FCK or the Fruitcake Club, an art commentary group with some of the favorites like Just a Robot, LS Mark, Mad Libs, Fuchsia Butters, Miss Zizi, Nezzy Monster, The Name's Junkie, Nani, Toby Majestic, Toasty Vanilla, Doodle Tones, OMGIJ252, Teddy That Draws, One Man Show Off, Mimi Diggs, Chaos 55T, and Ben the Looney. Oh, and let's not forget Hopeless Peaches, with connections to others like Ponder Sprocket and Darkness Stone. To those who keep up with the art community's dramas, some of these names may be familiar, especially Toby Majestic considering her hypocritical condemning of Ben the Looney and what that shit show started. Though that isn't the only thing that group has done, it is what they're known for, and that's why I've made this series. Many of the FCK's antics were entirely overlooked, ignored, and swept under the rug by the art community. The same community that often often claims to care about truth and accountability. Those are the moral standards they wave around in every drama. And yet, many of the things I'm going to be talking about in this series have not even been mentioned or talked about by any of them, except the Toby situation, obviously. We will get to Toby eventually. When it's her time, don't worry. No one will be left out. This all started with a drama that hit the art community in September of 2019. Of course, like that of the commentary community, everyone talked about it in September. Madame and Slimmers was the talk of the town. Madame didn't credit her artist and then attempted to dox her. One particular individual was Toasty Vanilla, who hopped on the bandwagon on September 25th of 2019 with a video called My Personal and Kinda Shit Experience with Madame, which got 10k views. He would later go on to create the Fruitcake Club and invite many people that had issues with with Madame or made videos on Madame in September. Why? Because the group was apparently made to take down Madame. My involvement comes from when I was following Slimmers on Instagram and saw her posts. This was mid-September of 2019. Contrary to popular belief, I didn't watch or look up to Madame. I didn't even know who she was. I went to YouTube and started making fun of the people who bitched and screamed art thief. One of these individuals was Miss Zizi, who made a Twitter post on September 24th, whining about me whining in her comments. I realized that many of these art losers dwelled on Twitter, practically lived on it, and that was where I should fuck with them. So I did exactly that. I made a Twitter and began fucking with them. One of the earlier individuals being Miss Easy, who had this to say in response to me. Unfortunately, my account is suspended. Editing me here, and I just wanted to explain something, because if I don't, it does come up later in the series. If I don't explain it, the art commentary audience, and potentially some of their content creators, will try and latch onto it to accuse me of hiding shit again. So to explain, when I signed on to Twitter, or X as it's now called, as it's been rebranded, I started scrolling through my Twitter feed, and ever since the rebranding, it'll only load a certain amount of tweets on your suspended account, and then it'll just randomly stop, and it'll give you this error that says, this account is suspended, and it doesn't have permission to do this, or some kind of fucking blue error pop-up. I got irritated by it, because I wanted to screenshot absolutely everything, so I could address absolutely everything and put these claims to rest. So I appealed to get them unsuspended and they got unsuspended as of recording this in November. I do have the accounts under protected tweets, but that's specifically because I have to give credit to the art community. They're extremely relentless, and last time mass reported the accounts into the fucking suspension, and I don't want that happening again as I'm scrolling through them to get evidence. So yes, the accounts are unsuspended, and yes, I have them under protected, but just to prove that I'm not trying to fucking hide anything and I don't care to hide anything, here's that same interaction that I just showed you in the video between me and Miss Zizi, but with my account unsuspended now, because the screenshot that I previously took was when the account was suspended. And here's a little interesting piece of trivia that'll come up later, but as you can see, the interaction between me and Miss Zizi happened on September 25th of 2019. The reason that's interesting is two days later, on the 27th, I said I was going to possibly wipe my tweets or delete most of them, because there won't be a use for them. And the FCK used that to claim that I was trying to delete my tweets to hide them, basically just trying to say that I was malicious and nefarious and trying to hide my actions. Yet, I have this interaction between me and Miss Easy right here, still. So clearly, if I was deleting all of my tweets to hide them, why is this still here? Not being prepared. Bruh, the artist is a child. Of course they aren't well prepared for things. That doesn't mean you get to pin the blame on them. 
especially when they're villainized by an adult who should know better. You're not special or smarter than her, dude. You're also a child, both in age and by the way you think of the situation. No matter how much it's explained to you on how wrong it is, you stay in your bubble and say no. It's tiresome. Though I remember being that way when I was 16. I'm sure you'll grow out of it. Just do teenager things, go to school and eat your veggies, alright? She talked about how it's wrong for a child to be villainized by an adult, only for her to later participate in a group of adults villainizing a child. She tried to be condescending about my age, that I was just a child, and yet just a few months later she had no problem spamming degenerate shit in that same child's comments. The point I'm making, and that will be emphasized as this series goes on, is that many of the things this group said would either bite them in the ass later, or they'd end up contradicting. Hindsight has not been so kind to them. One of the things I quickly learned is the art community's overall inability to handle an opinion other than the general consensus, their extreme sensitivity, and their moral monologues. Power tripping on the self-serving idea they'll hold people accountable and that justice needed to be served. Guess what anime characters fit that fucking description? That is the very reason I used Light Yagami and Zamazu while mocking them on Twitter, which I continued to do, often quoting these characters while making fun of these people. One of the people watching this unfold was Mad Libs or Mad Libs Art, another art commentary loser. She was the first of the Fruity Posse to take a swing and kick off this venture with a video titled Madame's White Knight, uploaded on the 28th of September. In the video, she read my tweets and had a good laugh, and it was admittedly pretty funny. Since most people that I've seen who know about this drama have their head on straight and realize that art theft, doxing, and outing somebody's assault is wrong, there aren't a whole lot of defenders. But there is one. There's one beautiful boy who makes up for everything. One who will defend his milady madam to the death. And his name is possibly redacted because I'm probably going to censor it. All of this that I'm getting for this specific thread comes from good old Miss ZZ. By the way, if you ever watch this, big ups. I fucking love your videos, love your art, keep doing what you're doing. So the thread's just going on normal. ZZ mentioning how this person in uh, this post right here called her a fur fag, proving that they are indeed 16. And then this boy, this boy comes in, not really edgy, but nonetheless, a good attempt. And someone said, far better than your own attempt at trying to defend your fair maiden. Actually, false. It's not. Second, I am no fan of Madame. You'll see in the rest of this video why that's definitely a fucking lie. Something else you'll realize is that this boy is a big brain galaxy genius. My favorite moment being this. But he's seen the video, and apparently Wooey's gonna destroy me with his fucking, with his fucking empty channel with six subscribers! <laughs> Oh my god, I'm fucking dead, this is hilarious. She went on to private both this video and the next one she made on me. Not only that, but after I announced that I had the FCK server with the trailer, she conveniently announced that she was leaving the community and dropping the persona of Mad Libs. A day or two later, after her video calling me Madame's White Knight, she accused me of mocking Slimmers' sexual assault and that I was claiming to have her number. My Slimmers video, released on October 3rd, and nine days later on the 12th, Toasty Vanilla invited OMGIJ252 and Slimmers into the FCK Discord. OMGIJ252, also known as James, had previous issues in drama with Madame, long before Slimmers was ever involved, but he did make a video with the help of Slimmers on September 19th of 2019. This is likely what got him into the FCK Discord, as the FCK was founded on the goal of taking down Madame. On December 15th, OMGIJ released his video, Madame Feel Bad For Me Part 3, featuring Akumo. He was the second FCK member to make a video talking about me. James was also the same age as me, 16, and ironically, he had also previously doxxed a kid. Looking back, that was just an early taste of the hypocrisy to come from the FCK. By then, they had deemed me the White Knight or Simp for Madame, which the art community clung to. Realizing they had a potential bandwagon to make themselves more relevant, the FCK set their eyes on me. The autistic Twitter wars and LARPing as Light Yagami for shits and giggles pissed them off enough that they made it their mission to accuse me of anything and everything all the way into the next year. The mental gymnastics and bullshittery to get there didn't matter, but they made sure to sugarcoat their intentions to make themselves appear noble. That they were doing it for slow and I was attacking and harassing her. Me and those damn mean tweets. She was their excuse. Some may be asking and wondering, why even talk about this? It happened two or three years ago. It's old drama. There's a handful of reasons. First, they think it can be hidden if they just delete it and pretend it didn't happen. That they can just walk away. Most of the videos they made during their crusade, they ended up taking down. They're cowards. Second, people only think of the Toby drama when it comes to the FCK and don't know of their other antics. 
Why? Pretty simple. Even though many in the art community knew about it, watched as it went on, commented on these videos, and kept up with it, none of them spoke up or wanted to enlighten the overall audience. It was specifically not talked about so that they wouldn't have to acknowledge their friends and the massive fuck-up that was the entire crusade. Third, the FCK and co. are fake. Whether it be bullshit apologies that they contradict or lying within their apologies. Fourth, my previous videos could have been much better. I know more than I did before. I didn't notice or know many of the things that I do now. And making better videos discussing it, there's nothing to lose. Fifth, the people, the audience, have been lied to for three years now. Fed lies to recite them. The amount of people in or that watch the art community who like to talk on the events and act as though they're experts on who I am and what I did in the Madame drama is astonishing considering none of them can get it right. The very reason we have these Akumu lore historians is because the FCK lied for a year under the guise of warning people about me and holding me accountable. How fucking ridiculous is that? Hey guys, it's Mad Libs, and as I'm sure you've noticed, this video is nothing like my typical video. My sprites aren't as active and animated as usual, there's stock footage in the background instead of a speed paint because I refuse to draw anything that will in the future be associated with this or associated with this in my brain. And the reason being is that this video is a lot heavier than normal. As cliche as this is going to sound, I never really wanted or expected to make this kind of video or this video specifically. I actually had a rule for myself on YouTube that I would never make a serious video on a specific person. You know, I stick to communities and topics and trends in the art community instead of drama. And I also said a long time ago that I would never be talking about this person again due to their horrible behavior that I didn't want to put more attention on. However, the person I'll be talking about today is not only spreading lies and cronies to attack people in the art and commentary community, he's also been doing it for over a year, and I feel like attention on the subject is exactly what's needed right now. Actually, this video is going to be uploaded on the exact day that I uploaded my first video on this person a year ago, showing you guys that it has been exactly a year. I'm not exaggerating with that. Now, this person goes by Akumu. Yes, the Japanese word for nightmare. We're dealing with one of those people today. Now, most of you probably know him as the guy who made a horrible video about Slimmers and Madam during that whole drama, where he tried to claim that Slimmers needed to be hated just as much as Madam. And he was also trying to accomplish that by endlessly harassing her on Twitter. Now, quite a few people have made videos on this kid because of Nezzy Monster and Ponder Sprocket's video. However, all of them only talk about the video that he made, the one video and the one instance of harassment. And the ones that do get into the unrelated terrible things he said and done don't go as in-depth as I think they should. They only scratch the surface, which is a real problem. Because by doing that, they paint this kid as nothing more than a dumb teenager who made a video and had some bad takes. When in reality, he's done so many more reprehensible things that people need to know about. I'm just getting started, and I'm going to be cleaning house. This is just a palette prepper for what's to come, and the full course is coming up. The people who lied about me for a year, the people everyone point to as references, and the same people who went on to accuse me of trying to dox, among other more ridiculous shit. You'll find that the two upcoming dishes complement one another, because next up on our menu is octopus and Asian. I am the end. I am the ceaseless wheel, the last scholar of gold. I am your doom. I want to make a couple of things perfectly clear ahead of time so that this isn't lost, misconstrued, and things are crystal clear for whenever these people or their community tries to retaliate with whatever shoddy hit piece that comes next. I am not making this series to proclaim myself a saint or some morally virtuous and better individual. I never was and never will present myself like that. One, because it's fake and retarded. And two, because I'm not art commentary. No one is a perfect individual without flaws or mistakes. I also can't really objectively decide whether I'm better than someone or not, and I don't care to. I keep things as simple as what is truthful and consistent. I'm making this series for a couple of reasons. The first was previously mentioned, but to inform the audience so that the antics of the FCK aren't lost to time, so people can see this trend within the art commentary community. The second is because that community loves to cling to the lies and misinformation those dishonest quacks told them about me. Despite the fact many of them took down their videos and will lie about the events when they're brought up against them. I'm making this series to show that the people they love to swing around and put their faith in against me and others are not what they present themselves as. They claim to care about all these moral standards such as truth and accountability, yet they lie, misrepresent, 
falsify, and accuse people of all kinds of things that they have done or will do themselves. Like with Fuchsia Butter, who said that Madame verbally abused slimmers in a video. The whole community was going on about how dare an adult say terrible things about a minor. And yet in the same video, Fuchsia told me to suck his pink pube dick. That I was a spineless, honorless shit puppet. I didn't see the art community demand he be held accountable. I didn't see any of their screeching. No, no, but they did their screeching towards me. I want to show that trend and show that they don't really care about the moral fagging they pulled on me or anyone else they've tried to smear. To show you, the audience, that that community is nothing more than a ruse, a bamboozling, and the people being bamboozled and goaded is you, the audience. Whether that be the lies and misinformation surrounding me and my involvement in the Madame drama, and so on. The art community's track record of willful dishonesty is astounding. Many of the standards they claim to care about in one bandwagon drama are contradictory predicted or outright thrown away in the next. They'll sweep shit right under the rug for their friends, but dare to start drama with others if other people do it. They'll get onto you for doing something, or lie about you doing something, treat you like the spawn of Satan for it, make sure everyone knows what they claim you did, do it themselves the next week or month, and it's not talked about at all. If these people truly cared about telling the truth, dispelling false narratives. Please do not harass or attempt to intimidate any users featured in this video. Ponder Sprocket commentaries are intended as critiques of situations or behaviors based on the information available and are meant to demonstrate wrongdoings, contradictions, or dispel false narratives so that others may come to an informed opinion. Under no circumstances is targeted harassment appropriate or encouraged. And holding people accountable. Why is it none of them talked about what their friends were doing? Nani, Hopeless Peaches, Chaos 55T, all knew what was taking place. They were in the FCK Discord and commenting on their videos. This list can go on and on, but I'll make it simple. They are the very things they accuse others of. They goat their audience into a myriad of lies and beliefs about people. And then when the standards they set onto others come a-knocking on their door, they weasel and squirm their way out of it. I want to show you that the moral posturing and virtue they claim to have, that they wield against people, is nothing but a facade. So as this series goes on, ask yourself this one question. If the things I have done and said, the things they've lied about me doing, are oh so terrible, that they still cling to it despite any time their actions are mentioned they cope with, but it's in the past, why are the things they've done not talked about at all? Think of this series as the blue pill and red pill dilemma. You take the blue pill, don't watch the series or the video. You stay blissfully unaware in a good drone for your favorite art tards, buying into whatever slop they feed you in the next drama you take interest in. Take the red pill and hear me out. Connect the dots from the information I provide. Get the full story instead of the lies you've likely been fed about me and more. And question why your favorite people who love to talk about truth and accountability against others often run from it or ignore it when it's applied to them. Why they accuse others of false narratives but gladly participate in or make one. Choosing the blue pill is clicking off the video. Choosing the red pill is watching the series and as having the information in those videos forms the needed foundation that the resolution sets atop. The Fruitcake Cuck series is the very rabbit hole to set the precedent and show my point about that community. Smell, 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 smell,